Welcome back to How They Keep You In, the show where we talk about the psychological tricks that religions use to control your mind. Uh, I'm Daniel, and this is David. Hi. So remember, in previous episodes, we talked about how um, the, the group tells you to fear the outside world, and, that, and they tell you not to look too closely at that, the outside world because it's so bad. <laughs> It's so bad that you shouldn't look at it. And then they tell you that the work that you're doing as part of the group is very, very important. So um, uh, they, they play to your ego. And the way that they, um, the way, the way that they manipulate you in this way, the way that they convince you of these things is, by, is through an imaginary world. Uh, at least that's often, often what they use. So there's an imaginary world, and the religious leader is saying, you know, this stuff is happening in the imaginary world, so you need to react to it. So they're constantly getting you to react to the imaginary world rather than thinking, you know, thinking on your own about whether the imaginary world is real. Mm -hmm. um, so today we're going to talk about demons, and demons are basically uh, the top level for imaginary world. That's where where you're being told that there's imaginary stuff happening everywhere, just all around you. And the, the demons are uh, in in the world and they're nearby and they're constantly trying to interact with you. That's like a, yeah, that's that's the top level of religion. So maybe you could talk to us about what demons are like in in your experience as a Pentecostal Christian. Yeah, well, years ago, back when I was a young Pentecostal preacher, and my father was a pastor, uh, we were raised in the environment that not only were there angels watching over us, this is what we believed, we also believed that there were demons, which we believed and were taught from the Bible that they were fallen angels, right? Most people that come from church understand that concept. Lucifer was cast out of heaven. He became Satan because of his pride. And a third of the angels that were cast out of heaven with Lucifer are now currently demons. So they're the bad angels. So there's always this warfare, invisible warfare, against the light, against darkness, good versus evil, good angels versus the bad angels, the demons. So yeah, in my environment, the way I was raised and what I used to preach, right from the Bible, was that we as believers back then were in a spiritual warfare, a constant battle against these invisible forces. And it's pretty clear in the book of Ephesians chapter 6, there's that spiritual warfare. And you have to wear the spiritual armor to protect yourself from demons because they would try to influence your thoughts and so forth. So yeah, it was a constant uh, battle in prayer, resisting the devil and demons and so forth. Yeah. Yeah. So what, I mean, what kind of effect does that have upon a person? It's basically a way to make a person doubt everything that they think. Because mm -hmm. you're constantly thinking, uh, is, is this thought um, a good thought or is it an evil thought from the outside? Is this mind control or is it me? Mm -hmm. So it's, it's a way to make a person doubt everything that they're thinking. And that, that way you really have a hold on a person. Mm -hmm. e even when they're kind of out on their own, alone, uh, they can still be thinking this. They're thinking like, like which of my thoughts are real and which do I have to resist? Mm -hmm. And it's, it's kind of a way of, um, of creating multiple personalities because you're, you're telling a person that their, their natural inclinations are evil and they're from... They're from the outside, and there's a demon like right here, you know, mm -hmm. putting them in your mind, and you have to resist them. Mm -hmm. um, so, what about uh, what about uh, well, what kind of thoughts mm -hmm. were from the demons? That's a good question. Well, when I was a young man back in my twenties, when I was a preacher, and all my buddies who were on fire for Jesus, the main thing was lustful thoughts. Little did we know back then, it was just biology, right, <laughs> for procreation. Yeah. Science explains that. But back then, we didn't believe in science. 
So we thought, yeah, believe it or not, this guy can't believe that because he was raised in a different environment than I was. Yeah. So we didn't believe in science or naturalism. It was all spiritual. Everything was spiritual. So the thoughts that we had when we looked at a young, curvy, attractive female were not just, wasn't just biology. It was actually a temptation, a push or pull towards sin from the devil or demons. So it's from the dark side. So these thoughts would come into our mind that we would have to call each other on the phone, pray for each other that we can, we would resist, like the Bible says, resist the devil and he'll flee from you. So we had to constantly force these thoughts out of our mind by prayer, by fasting, by praying for each other, or putting on the whole armor of God, all these spiritual weapons that the Bible talks about. So it kept us thinking uh, not about reality. It kept us thinking about we need God for everything. It kept us in. Yeah. We had to pray. We had to depend upon God for strength to resist these horrible, evil thoughts and so forth. So it was a very delusional lifestyle. And, and if you believe that you can't rely on your own thoughts, mm -hmm. that makes you totally dependent. Like you just said, like Absolutely. we need God for everything. everything. So they, they try to keep you dependent yeah. on them. And also, this plays on your ego, too, because mm -hmm. they're saying, like, there's a, a war in heaven over you, and they've, they've, got, they've got angels and demons assigned specifically to you, and they're, you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> they're warring in, inside your brain. And just think of what kind of effect this has on children, mm -hmm. um, because, like, when, if you hear this sort of thing as you're growing up, you never, you, you, they, they try to keep you mm -hmm. from being reliant on your own thoughts ever um and so uh, you know a child who's just saying something like uh you know does this even make any sense at all then they're like oh that's a demon talking you have to get that thought out of your mind so it's not about uh rationally criticizing anything mm -hmm. it's about developing habits where you only think specific things and other thoughts are scary and, and you have to keep those out Right. That's that's the function of demons, yeah. uh, and, and it's very terrible, very very bad for people. Uh, so if you're in a religion where there are demons everywhere and they're nearby and they're constantly uh, trying to affect you, that's very that's very serious because that is not how normal people are. Mm -hmm. <laughs> normal people are just like that. You know, that's what I think. <laughs> Well, they would say they're normal, though. And they would say those of us that don't believe yeah, in I know. <laughs> are natural, carnally minded, and they're spiritually minded. So they've been enlightened. And of course, we would say just the opposite. Yeah. Enlightened. So I want to talk about uh, The Screw Tape Letters, which is a book by C.S. Lewis. And when I read that, I just thought, this is so bizarre. But it's, um, it's, it's a book about uh, letters. It's... Um, Oh, now I can't remember the name of it. It's like epistolary novel or something. But it's letters between a high up demon and a lower down demon. The high up demon is telling the lower demon techniques. He's giving them advice on how to corrupt a person. And the, the lower ranking demon is out in the world and he's assigned to a person and he has to, uh, he has to trick that person into thinking evil thoughts so that eventually he'll go to hell and the demons in hell can eat him. And, uh, it, I mean, I, when I read it, I thought it was really boring and uh, bizarre. Mm. But I, now I would recommend it to anybody who wants to understand religion. Because just, just think about what effect this has on somebody who really believes it. They, they are constantly oh, yeah. criticizing <clears throat> their own thoughts. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And, um, and uh, you know, this the book is kind of humorous, mm -hmm. but... You know, there, there there's a subtext of, of pure terror, I would say, especially mm. for, for children. Oh, yeah. And it keeps Christians in that endless cycle because when we used to get, we would have these thoughts that we thought came from demons and so forth. We would always have to go back to prayer and to God and to remove the guilt and the shame from acting on these thoughts, these impure thoughts. So it's always that guilt and shame. It's an endless cycle. You go back to God, to church to be relieved from your guilt through prayer and so forth. Uh, and that's another way they, they keep you in. But, and, and you mentioned the movie The Omen to me. So oh why my didn't you gosh, talk about yeah. that? Yeah. I mean, well, back in my worldview as a preacher's child, I don't remember how old I was back in the 70s, I guess a teenager or whatever. 
a preteen or teenager, but I remember watching The Omen. And back then, I believed about this whole concept of demons and angels fighting and fighting for our soul. And I watched The Omen. It scared the heebie-jeebies out of me. I mean, I couldn't sleep for two or three nights. Um, I watched any kind of horror movie about the uh, supernatural realm would horrify me. And now, <laughs> I mean, if I were a child now back then as an atheist, I would just go, oh, it's just ridiculous. It's a movie, right? But when you're in that worldview and you literally believe that there's a supernatural world that exists of demons against angels and all, it har it's horrifying. It's a horrible way to live. You're constantly trying to warfare against it. And every evil thought is of Satan and good thoughts of God. And uh, it keeps you, again, out of reality. Okay, well, uh, thanks for watching. That's how they keep you in.